Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Here today is the final part, part two, of this little kind of mini series that I've done on converting your PS2 games over into a package file, a .pkg file. Yesterday in part one, I went over how you can make your ISO or your bin PS2 image and convert it over into PS2 classics, otherwise known as a iso.bin.enc file. This is absolutely necessary for you to do before we compile the package file. So if you haven't done that, make sure you take care of that first. Also in that video, if you look in the description, there are links to a couple of tutorials I made that show you how to make your PS2 ISO games maybe a little bit smaller by removing the uh, padded or dummy files that they sometimes put in them that just make them way overly you know larger than they should be and how to add the code breakers uh, cheat software into the ISO so watch that video look in the description in, in the links of that video um, so you can see those tutorials if you haven't moving forward I'm assuming that you've already converted your ISO or your bin over into that ISO bin.enc file that we need and that you've pretty much taking care of all of that. And I'm going to mention just like I did in the last video that I strongly recommend you install Aldo's PS3 tools collection into your PC if you haven't already. I did a tutorial on this. I will put the link in the description to this tutorial in case you're interested in installing uh, that collection. However, it's not necessary because I will be providing you today with the tools that we need to get everything accomplished. Uh, but I do strongly recommend that in the future, if you haven't, you install the collection because there is a lot of great content in there. So today, when we make this package file, it's pretty much going to be a culmination of all these things that I've taught you guys before. Um, I've shown you how to make modifications in the past to your PS2 and PS3 games and even your homebrew apps, like how to make a customized sound file, like I'm showing you here how to make a customized animated icon, and even how I make my own box art, and I show you how you can do yours, or just you know how to make your XMB background image in general so that when you hover over the icon, it pops up. So I talk about that in that video as well. So this is going to be a collection of all of that. I've already trimmed down my ISO. I added the code breakers. I have a customized sound file. I did an animated icon and I have the box art. So it's all going to come together in this package file and you can see how it looks once we install it. And of course, I will be adding all the links to these videos I just showed you down in the description. It's not necessary to add all of these modded files in order to make the package file. That's just what I'm doing. In a little bit, we'll go over in more detail about that. You can just add the regular basic files and you'll be fine. All right, so let's get some housekeeping out of the way as we did in the last video. I know that all of this works for systems that are fully jailbroken. So if your PS3 is running the Han exploit, this may or may not work. I have no idea because I only deal with fully jailbroken systems and not Han exploited ones. So if you have CFW installed in your PS3, then this will work for you. The next thing is that for those of you who have a fully jailbroken system, you must be in KEX in order for any of this to work. So if you're in DEX, more than likely none of this will work. There may be a workaround or whatnot, but PS2 classics don't play in DEX mode actually a lot of times the package file won't even install so when you try to install it while in DEX it may get hung up on the please wait screen and then after about three four or five minutes it'll just kick you back to the XMB so remember you need to be in KEX the other thing is that this is emulation and this type of emulation is not 100% flawless don't expect every PS2 game to work flawlessly some will and most probably will but you will run into some that of course may you know freeze up they'll glitch up or they just won't load at all that's beyond my control guys nothing i could do sorry 
All right, so down in the description, there is a zip file. It contains two folders. You can go ahead and put those two folders on your desktop. One is the True Ancestor Repacker. The other one is the PS2 PKG and Tools folder. These are the same ones that we were using in the last video. So if you've already done it, you don't have to do it again. Also, if you have successfully installed Aldo's PS3 Tools collection, then more than likely you will not need to use this PS2 PKG folder because all of the stuff that's here is already in the Aldo's PS3 uh, Tools collection, so you won't need to use it. For those of you that haven't installed that collection, then you will be using, obviously, what's in this folder. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go into the PS2 PKG and Tools folder. There you will see this folder here, which says PS2U10000. You're going to just make a copy of this and paste that copy to your desktop, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And there it is right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and open it up. This is going to end up being our package file, but I'm gonna cover more on this in a little bit. First, let's go into USR DIR. Now this iso.bin.edat is not necessary. I've probably done maybe about 17 or 18 PS2 games and they work just fine without it there. I think it's only needed for certain games that require that edat there. So if you launch a game and it doesn't work or load or whatever, then make the package file with this edat there. So I know the, um, the Metal Slug Anthology game doesn't require it, so I'm going to delete it. After that, let's go into save data. Just make sure there are two files there, the VME files. So that looks good. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take that iso.bin.enc uh, ISO file that we converted in the last video, and we're going to drag it in here to this USR DIR folder. Okay, so um, that's the one that has been converted to PS2 Classics. Now right here, what you absolutely need to make a package file besides the USR DIR and besides what we just did is you need an icon 0.png you need the param sfo and you need the ps3 logo dot that the pick one png is not necessary this is just the background image that appears when you hover over the icon so that's not necessary but all the other ones are also make sure when you make your own that the sizes are correct here the icon 0 png is 320 by 176 and the pick one, if you are going to add your own, make sure it's always 1920 by 1080 in size. And if you wanted to delete this pick one PNG file, you can. It will not affect the package in any way, shape, or form. It also won't affect your game at all. The only thing that will happen is when you hover over the game's icon on your XMB, you know, you won't see any artwork popping up or anything like that. So you can delete it if you want. Now the PS3 logo.dat file, that you can leave there. This one will work the same for any game, so you can leave it alone. Make sure also that all of your files are in caps. All the lettering needs to be capitalized. If you notice, every single file, every single extension, and every folder in here is all in caps. If there's even one lowercase letter somewhere, then chances are none of this is going to work. And don't get your O's and zeros confused because there is no such number called O. All right, moving on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my customized files that I already made, the icon zero PNG right here. Uh, the pick one PNG, which is my box art, and then I made a customized um, animated icon and the sound file. Again, the only one that's mandatory here is the icon zero. These other three are just optional, but I'll be adding them. I'm going to go ahead and open up the PS2U10,000 folder, and I'm going to be copying all of these over, or actually I'm just going to drag and drop them, and I'm going to overwrite the ones that are there. Yes to that and yes to that, all right? So there we go. I have my customized files there and uh, the extra ones. Now we're gonna go ahead and tackle the Param SFO. And so to do this, we are going to go to PS2 PKG and Tools folder, double click on the Param SFO editor.exe file, click on the black 
browse folder and then navigate to wherever your Param SFO is. In this case, it's on our desktop in the PS2U 10,000 folder. If you have PS3, uh, the PS3 Aldo's tools collection already installed successfully, then when you open up that tools collection here to the menu, the Param SFO is right here. And then of course you navigate to your F uh, SFO. If you want to make your life a lot easier, you can do it so that whenever you double click on an SFO file, it just opens up the editor automatically. To do that, go to any SFO file located anywhere in your system, double, uh, right click on it, go to open with, hit choose program file, hit browse, and then navigate to wherever the Param, SF2, uh, Param SFO editor.exe file is. In this case, for some of you, it may be here in the desktop in this folder. So you'll navigate to it and click on it. For those of you who've installed the uh, PS3 Aldo's Tools collection, where it is you installed it to, navigate there, find that exe file and click on it. When you do, you're gonna be clicking apply and then okay. And after that, when you click on your SFO from now on, it will just open straight up to the editor and make life way easier. Okay, so now that we've done that, there's only a couple things here that we need to change. The first one is the title ID. Here, you must put the title ID of the PS2 game. You should already know what that is from the previous video that I did and some of the other PS2 videos, but if you don't know how to find it real quick, all you need to do is go to the ISO of the game, not the converted ISO, not the one that ends in .enc, but just the regular ISO, the one you have before you did the conversion and uh, go ahead and open it with whatever program you want. Now I use Ultra ISO for my ISOs, as you can see, but you can use ISO Buster, um, really whatever you want. You just need to be able to look into the files. I think you can even look into an ISO with um, a WinRAR, so you can even use that. But anyway, we want to um, look here, and what you're looking for is a file that has four letters followed by an underscore, three numbers, a dot, and then two numbers. So basically it's going to look like this. There should be a file there that has four letters, an underscore, three numbers, dot, and then two numbers. That's your game ID. And just make a note of it. We're not gonna be using the underscore or the dot, we just need the letters and the numbers. So once we have that, that's what we're gonna put in this box. So for Metal Slug Anthology, it's gonna be SLUS 215.5.0. And then here, you can change this to whatever you want. Whatever you type here, that's what will display on the XMB when you hover over the game after it's been installed. Anthology. Now I'm gonna put CB10, that's just something that I add extra because it just lets me know that this game has the Code Breakers version 10 installed in it, uh, which I did earlier. So let's go ahead and close that and that's it. Now it's ready to be turned into a package file. So once you have your folder already, like we do here with all of your files, go ahead and rename it the same as the game's title ID. Basically what you put in your Param SFO title ID box, that's what you're gonna put here. So in this case, for this game, it's SLUS 215.5.0. Make sure the letters are all capitalized. Now, if you've installed your PS3 Aldo's Tools collection correctly, you should be able to right click and then click on Make Package and it should make the package file. Once that's done, you can rename the package file absolutely anything you want. It doesn't matter because once the game installs, whatever you named it in the Param SFO, that's what's gonna show on your XMB. A package file is just a container, that's all it is. So you can rename it anything you want, but at the end, you just need to make sure it says .pkg in small letters. If you don't have that set up for whatever reason, then we can use True Ancestor, and I'm gonna show you that method right now. So let's go into that True Ancestor folder you had unzipped earlier. If for some reason these folders haven't populated, all you need to do is run the program once, and they should auto-populate. Also, I can't remember, I don't think you do, I don't think this needs to run in administrative mode, but if it does, then go ahead and run it in that mode. Now go into the game folder, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna place this whole folder that we um, just been working on right into that game folder. So there we go, there it is. The whole folder is in there just like that. 
Now we're going to run the program. We're going to click on number two, which is a custom pack package. Now we are going to select number nine, PS2 um, Classic. So press nine and then enter. And you'll see that the folder that we just put inside of that game folder is right there. If you have other ones inside of that game folder, they will all populate and they will have a number next to them. In this case, we only have one in there. So the number one is there. So we're going to type number one. Okay, now it's going to tell you, please um, enter a content ID. Literally, you can just type it, whatever you see here exactly the same way. So we're going to do TA, but it has to be exactly perfect. Okay. Okay, there we go. So you can type literally the same exact thing. Everything has to be the same. And then once you're done, just hit enter. And then this, how long it takes just depends on the size of the game. So you can see the package has already finished and it tells you where it's at. It's in the package folder. So we can go ahead and once you get the successful message, close out there. Let's go into the PKG folder and there it is. Again, at this point, you can now name, uh, rename this package file absolutely anything you want. Just leave the dot PKG at the end. It could be small letters, uh, uh, capitals, it, it doesn't matter name it anything you want because when it installs it's going to show the proper name that was on the SFO uh, that you put on there when it installs to the XMB so this could be named literally anything you want it doesn't matter and that's it guys that's all you have to do so let's go ahead and let me just show you how this looks on the PS3 I'm gonna go ahead and rename this uh, M S anthology. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and continue this on the PS3. All right. So here we are at my PS3. Let's go into the package manager there. All right, and you can see the MS anthology is there. Let's go ahead and install that. Okay. So the install is complete. Let's go ahead and go down here and there we go let me go ahead and crank up the sound so you can hear it a little bit better all right so that's it we've um yeah, installed everything here. It looks good to go. And that's how it's done, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And we will see you on the next one.